This conference will now be recorded. Okay. The sets and Venn diagrams, paper two questions, here you go. So here, uh, let's begin with the very first question. They are, it says that a total of 20 trucks were tested at a checkpoint. Okay. Point to be noted that there are 20 trucks in the universal set. Okay, so their number, cardinality of uh, the universal set is 20. So do you know what exactly a cardinality thing is? Do you know what the cardinality is? Um, I don't think so. Okay, so you see, number of elements present inside any set is called the cardinality of that set. For example, if I just say I'm having set A that contains first four natural numbers. How many numbers I'm having inside this set? Four. So the cardinality of this set A is four. Similarly, if I have another set B that contains uh, first three vowels, okay, A, E, and I, okay, these are the first three vowels. So you see there are three elements in this set B, so the cardinality of these three. I hope it's clear now what exactly a cardinality is. Cardinality. Yes. That's all right. Okay. So here... The cardinality of the universal set is 20 in this question one. Okay. Now, six trucks failed the test for brake speed. means their brakes are not that much good. Seven trucks failed, uh, failed the test for lights. Their lights might be fused. They are failed. Uh, and nine trucks passed the test for both brakes and lights. Okay. So, testing criteria was based on lights and brakes. Just like that. All right. Now you see this is a universal set that is represented by this E notation. This E is quite stylish. It's a Greek E, okay? And it stands for universal set. So you see, I just write here for you, roughly, that cardinality of universal set is 20, okay? Now, let's try to complete the Venn diagram here, all right? So you see, six trucks fail the... fail for the brakes. So inside this brake circle, I am going to write six and inside the L circle, I'm going to write seven and so on. That's how it goes. All right. So this circles representing those trucks which are failed. Okay. So nine trucks are going to be written outside they are passed for both for both brakes and lights. Are you getting it? It's like that. So nine of them uh, have been passed. Okay. So how I'm going to write that? Nine of them have been passed. They are written outside. Okay. Now let me write down here that six trucks fail the test for the brakes. If I sum up these three numbers, what I'm going to get? What I'm getting here? 22. 22. And the cardinality of the universal set is 20. Nine trucks passed, so I write nine outside these two circles. Okay. Now, as far as the six and seven is concerned, I'm not going to write full six and full seven over here because in that case, when I sum these three numbers, giving me 22, which is, which is a contradiction, I should get 20 answer. So for that purpose, I need some number a number which is written uh, at this intersection of these two circles. Okay. So, there is no such number which has been, there is no such truck that has been failed because of both uh, breaks and lights. There is no such uh, truck. But instead, I need to satisfy this. So if I just write here, uh, uh, if I just write here, for example, 5, and 
over here I just write 1 and over here I just write uh, 6. Okay. And see lights are 7. So 1 plus 6 gives me 7. And brakes are 6 trucks who are failed because of brakes. So 5 plus 1 gives me 6. So if I just sum up these 4 numbers, am I getting 20? Just sum these 4 numbers and tell me, am I getting 20? Or is it 21? What is it? It's 12. 9 plus 5 plus 1 plus 6. 21, it's, yeah. 20. it's 21. So it means I need some more adjustment. So what to do? If I just write 2 here in the common region, I have to make adjustment anyhow. So if I just write 2 here, so breaks are 6. So I must write 4 here to make it 6. And five are, 7 are the lights. So I must write 5 here to make it 7. So now sum these four numbers. Are you getting 20? Yes. Yes. So that's how you adjust the values. I hope it's clear now. You see Venn diagram adjustment. It is all based on severe practice. Are you getting me? More you practice, more the concepts will get clear. Okay. There, it happens that while practicing, dozens of formulas get cleared automatically. So every time lectures are not mandatory, what is mandatory most is the practice. Okay, now we just go on part two. Part two says find out the cardinality of B complement intersection L complement. If the forms are not that much good, let me increase the size for you if you're not uh, okay with it. So let me increase. Now it's much better. Okay, so, okay now... I need to find the cardinality of the region that is B complement intersection A complement. Now, just tell me, which section is B complement? Entire section excluding B, that is B complement. Okay, let me just shade that roughly. If I just shade this with a different color. So the region which is outside B, that is B complement. Okay, this is your B complement. Now, what is L complement? The region outside L. Okay, that is L complement. All right, so I must shade the region for L complement and I must use, uh, which color shall I use? Green. Okay, so green is this. Here you can see circle L is not shaded with the green. The rest of the region is shaded with the green. Are you getting it? This is it. Now you can see which region contains both purple and green line. The region which is outside both uh, outside both these circles. Okay. So you see this region. Is containing both these purple and green lines. Okay, so the common region of B complement and L complement is this that I have just ticked with the black. Okay, you see circle B contains green section only. Okay, circle L contains uh, only a uh, pink region, pink lines. Okay, so they are not uh, containing any common line. Okay, they are containing totally different colors. So the common region that I can see is the one that I have just ticked with the black. So cardinality of B complement intersection L complement is 9 therefore. Are you getting it? So once you have filled the Venn diagram you can automatically answer this part 2 within no time. That's why it is containing just one mark. So you just highlight the shaded region first and then you write the cardinality means the value which is written up there. Okay. So this is the way how you do. Okay.
And then, if I ask you one more thing, just one more thing, tell me the cardinality of B intersection L. If I ask you this, what you are going to answer and how you're going to answer. You just look at the intersection region. Yes, yes, this is it. You just look at the intersection of B and L, and if you see any number there, you just write that the cardinality of this intersection region is 2, and that's it. Okay, so that's how we do. Now let's move on and see your next part. It is also just one mark question. In the Venn diagram below, shade the region P union Q intersection Q complement. It's damn easy, I must say. Now, for that purpose, what you do, you should know what is P union Q. P union Q is this full, both these circles. This is P union Q. Okay. Union means summation. You can say in that, in simple words, you can say so, summation. Okay. So this is your P union Q. And what is your Q complement? The section, the region which is outside Q, that is Q complement. Are you getting it? So, this is Q complement. This entire region. So, what is going to be the common region that you can find uh, which is present in both P union Q as well as Q complement? You say this region is the common one. This is the common region. It's containing both black and red lines. And you shade it nicely with your graphite. And uh, that's how you do it. Okay, and I must say one thing that uh, once when you identify the intersection region, you must remove the extra lines. Okay? You just keep the shaded section and you must remove your extra lines there. So, that's it. Okay. Oops. Okay, now we go to the next page. And uh... Okay, now in this Venn diagram, uh Shade the region of F union G complement. Okay, so you see G complement is the region outside G. Okay, so F union G complement will be will be this. You're going to shade this whole region. F union G complement. That is uh, how you shade. Okay, shade it properly. I'm just doing, giving, uh, maintaining the lines here, but you should shade it properly. Okay, just like that. That's it. Now, as far as uh, just for uh, a quick practice, if I ask you that I need you to shade F intersection G prime. Okay, how you're going to shade then? Okay, in that case. You know G prime is the region outside G, okay? So, of course, it is going to contain F as well inside it. So, the common region of F and G prime will be what? It will be this, F as well as G prime. So, the common region present in F as well as G prime is this. Clear? And you shade it. So this is the shaded region for the intersection and for the union I've just told you right before. So you 
should know how to maintain the difference whenever the set notations are different your results are different okay shaded sections are different just like that now we come to much uh, interesting part it's a two mark question part b and here it says that universal set contains first nine natural numbers x uh, a set a contains all those numbers which are odd in this universal so just it is written in builder notation form okay so convert it into tabular first so the odd numbers that i can see is one three five seven nine all the numbers which are not divisible by two they are odd numbers okay b is the set of square numbers which is present in universal set so can you see any square number yes four is the square of two nine is the square of three these are the two square numbers and c contains uh, multiples of three so c contains three six and nine okay so this is how you convert uh, the builder notation builder form of set into tabular form and now you are able to answer your part one okay so in here they are just asking that write all the elements of universal set in the venn diagram below all right so set a contains one three five seven nine now set b contains four and nine so in b and a nine is common are you getting it? okay and in c also nine is common so nine is coming common in all a b c so nine is actually present in the intersection of both of all of all these three circles nine must come here so whenever you are having a circles, three circles, uh, uh, which are all um, overlapped, then you must fill the region which is uh, present, uh, which is uh, in the result of overlapping of all the three circles. Okay, so this is the region that you must fill first. Okay, after that you approach the remaining intersection regions, which are this, this, and this. Are you getting it? This is the procedure how you uh, how you proceed while filling the Venn diagrams. Okay, now once this is done, now you see that is there any other number which is present in the intersection of A and B? So focus on your set A and B and see if you can find any other intersection or any other common element in both A and B. Is there? You say no. So you're going to write nothing here. Clear? Yeah? And then, see if you can find any intersection number in the region of A intersection C. So, in set A and C, can you find any other element which is common? You say yes. 3 and 3. So 3 is common in A intersection C. So, you just write 3 there. Okay. Similarly, in B intersection C, over here, can you see any element common other than 9? Say no. In B and C, only 9 was common and no other number was common there. So you just keep it empty. All right. That's how you fill up. And then you just try to focus on the remaining values. Now fill up the uh, empty region of your A. I have already written 3 and 9 from A. So which numbers are left? 1, 5, 7. So you just write 1. Five, seven. Okay. Now in B, only four was left. Nine was written already, so four is written. Is going to be written here. And in C, nine is written already, and three is also written already. So what is left is six. So you just write six here. Okay. Now tell me which number is left still unwritten. That is two. Two is the only number which is. Uh, which is not present in any of these three subsets, right? So, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 was also not there. So, 2 and 8 will be written outside these circles. Clear? 
that's how you fill up the Venn diagram with respect to these three subsets and the universal SETI. Okay, so now calculate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's all covered, and that's how you do. Okay, so remember, I repeat whenever you have three overlapped subsets, you always fill up, try to fill up the region which is so formed by the intersection of all these three subsets and then come to the remaining intersection regions and then come on the individual regions. Clear? That's how we get up. And now, another number is included in this set E. This number is in the region of A complement intersection B intersection C. Okay. Write down a possible value for this number. Okay. Okay. We'll see that. We have included one number in, in this universal set. What is that number? We don't know. They have just given us that that number is satisfying this region. It must be written inside this region. You see, B is what these containing square numbers of this universal set. And C is containing multiple of three. Okay. And A complement will be what? A complement should be those numbers which are not odd, means they are even. Okay. So the number should be even. It should be square. And it should be a multiple of three as well. Clear? So... And what is going to be the location of this region? Let me just shade that region roughly. So A complement is the region outside A. So B C Okay. So this region is going to be uh, my uh, intersection region, which is outside A, containing B as well as C. So this is going to be my A complement, intersection B, intersection C. Okay, this is going to be the region. Now, it should be even. Prince? Yeah. It should be Shouldn't square. Uh, be the intersection in the middle. I didn't get how you got this. Which intersection nine? Where are, yeah. where, where are, no, where the are intersection we? C. So shouldn't it be in the middle part? Which middle part you're talking about? This one? Or no? It is included in A. So it cannot be uh, the part of the shaded region. Okay. Yeah. Because let me just let me just uh, do it manually because I just did it directly. Maybe this could be the reason you're getting a little confused. You see, this is the region outside A. Yeah. The region outside your circle A is A complement. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Now, which region contains A complement as well as B as well as C? So you just say this one. Um, different color is necessary. This this circle this circle. So this region is containing B, C, and A complement. That's a common region. Okay. Now I need to substitute a number in this region that should be even. Means this A complement means it must not be odd. Okay. So it should be even then it means. Okay. So what is odd? Number which is not divisible by 2. 
So opposite to odd is even. Okay. So I need to select a number that should be divisible by 2 and also divisible by 3, and it should also be square. We have to select that number. Okay. Multiple of 3. Okay. So I'm going to write it in the intersection region of B and C. Okay. Because if I simply write it in B, then it is going to represent only square number. If I only write it individually in C, then it is going to contain even and multiple of 3. It is no more square. So I have to write it in this region. I have to write the number in this region then. Are you getting it? Should be even. It should be square and multiple of 3. I hope it's clear. Now I have to select that number. Okay. So a number that is divisible by 2 and 3 should be divisible by 6 as well because 2 and 3 means 2 into 3 give you 6. So we have to select a number that should be perfect square as well as divisible by 6. So if it is divisible by 6, it means it is divisible by 2 as well as 3 both. Are you getting me? So perfect square 36 and is divisible by 6 because in the table of 6, the very first square number that you can see is 36. Okay. So it is divisible by 6. And 36 is divisible by 2 as well. It's 18. And it's divisible by 3 as well, which is 12. Got it? So 36 is the number. So in the universal set, you have included 36. Okay. That is in the region of A complement the section B intersection C. So a possible value for this number is 36. You can write uh, more than one answer if you want to. But here it's simply one mark question. So if this 36 is more than enough, you just stop your work there. So it's 1, 2, 3, up to 9, and 36. This is one more number that was included in this set. Okay. Is it clear? This. We go now to the next page. Mm. Now, here, a uh, universal set contains students in a certain class. Okay. Students who study physics is in the set B. Students who study chemistry uh, lie in the set C. And students who study both physics and chemistry is this. Okay, it's like that. Now, after looking at the Venn diagram, you need to answer these subparts. Okay, so find the number of students who study physics or chemistry. Okay, they haven't said physics and chemistry. In case of and, you're going to select this answer. So, in case of either physics or chemistry, okay, so there's a choice. So, it means either physics or chemistry means 5 plus 8, that will be 13. That's how you write. Clear? And then, find the number of students which lie in the region P intersection C. In a, a C complement, sorry, P intersection C complement. C complement is the region outside C that contains this whole thing. Okay, this is your C complement. So, the common region that contains P and C complement both is this. And it contains number 5. So the number of elements present in this section, B intersection C complement, is 5. Okay, so you just write 5 here. That's how it is. And then, a student who 
does not study chemistry is chosen at random all right find the probability that this student does not study physics as well you see the students who do not study chemistry neither chemistry nor physics is seven there are seven students who don't study uh, both of these subjects okay now how many students are here who do not study chemistry they are five plus seven okay these students do not study chemistry as at all five of them study physics as physics do physics just physics but seven study neither physics nor chemistry so these students do not study chemistry at all so the total number of students who do not study chemistry who do not study chemistry they are 12 in number 7 plus 5 give you 12 right so there are 12 in number there's a total number of students who do not study chemistry from these students we have to select those students who do not study physics as well they are seven okay but the probability that this student does not study physics as well is seven by twelve okay so seven by twelve will be your answer okay first to select the sample space okay and then from this sample space you study those a number of those students who do not study physics so there are seven seven by twelve is going to be the probability of selecting such student who will study none of these subjects okay. you must be studying arts or something okay now move on to the part b here again a venn diagram is given to you you need to shade the region of d union e complement now tell me Where shall I shade? Um, D and outside of D. Do I have to uh, shade fully? Yeah, you have to shade the whole thing. If I shade full D, it means it is going to contain intersection region D that contains E. I need to select only that region of D that does not contain E. So this region and the outside region. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, but that's how you do. All right. Okay. Now here Q is a is a set given to us. It contains these elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. First six natural numbers it contains. And write down a set where P uh, set P such that P is gonna be the subset of Q. So I have to take um, I have to pick up any subset. Uh, from this set Q. You see, I'm having six uh, elements in this set Q. So how many subsets I can form here? I can form the number of subsets equal to number of subsets can be equal to two power this cardinality. Okay, so it is giving me 64. So I'm going to have 64 subsets from this set Q. Now you have choice. You can pick up any one subset you want. So I just pick up uh, three element subset. One, two, three. P is one of these 64 subsets. So I just pick up. You can pick one. You can pick two. The single element subsets. You have choice. You can pick one, three. Two element subsets, you can pick two, three. You can pick five, six. You can pick five. Empty set is also a compulsory subset, you know that? Okay. So this is it, that's how we do. And uh, you have freedom, you have 64 degree of freedoms uh, to select any answer you want. Okay. 
Now, we come to the next part, B. It says that shade these regions in the Venn diagram. Now, up to you. M union and complements, just like the previous question. How I'm going to shade? M and outside of M, not the whole thing. Yeah, just that M that does not contain M. So. And this whole region. I'm just sharing quite roughly. Uh, have hazard form you should shade properly okay it's your side and now shade a union b intersection c complement a union b contain this full circles these two circles completely are the part of a union b yeah it's completely included and intersection C contains that region that is outside C. So this is my intersection region. C intersection. C, C complement, I'm sorry. C complement is this region outside C. I am not including C. Now, which region contain both brown and Green lines, you say this. That's going to be the section that we need to shape. You can thoroughly have a look once again on this question. I can undo it. If you still have confusion, you can ask me. No, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, now we are having some nice three circles, having a huge cardinalities here. So here I'm having a universal set that contains your English alphabets. So capital X, Y, Z. These are the subsets which are all overlapped. And only in Y intersection Z I'm not having anything. You can see. Okay. Now, use such notation to complete the statements for the Venn diagram above. Okay. Now, C dash X. You see, C is the element present in the set X. Yeah. So, C is the element of X. This is the notation of element of. I hope you are aware with the set notations means element of yes not the element of this means for all this means there exist okay these are some this means this bar means such that okay so that's how we do so these are the elements you should remember union intersection you know already so
So that's it. Okay. Now dash is equal to AMI. <clears throat> Which set contains AMI, AME? Sorry. So X intersection Y. X intersection Y is equal to AME. It contains AME. Y intersection Z contains what? Contains nothing. So what shall I write here? You can either write pi or you can write empty set. Because this set contains nothing. Okay. List the elements of X union Y union Z whole complement. This is something you are going to answer me now. I'm not sure. X union, Y union, Z contains all these elements. Yeah? Right? Whole complement means the elements which are written outside these three circles. U, V, and W, they are present outside these three circles, right? So X union Y union Z whole complement is actually representing U, V, W. Are you getting it? Because you know... X union Y union Z is actually these three circles. So you just, if I ask you to shade, you say that I'm going to shade all these three circles, of course. Right? So the region which is outside these three circles is the complement region of, of the union of this. Right? So the complement region is this. Contains UVW. And then find the cardinality of X complement in intersection Z. Now, before answering this question, you have to uh, shade the region either roughly or just in your mind. Once when you find out the subjective region, after that you will say that how many elements are present in that region. The number of elements present in that region will be written over here because they are asking you about the cardinality. Okay. So X complement intersection Z region is where it is located. Where it is going to locate. The region outside X is all this. Yeah. That's the region outside X. Okay. Now in this region, where you can find your Z, you see the Z is fully present here. So the common region that contains Z and your X prime is this. Is it clear? This section contains full Z and your X prime. That's the common region. And this region contains F, J, K, L, H. These are the elements which are present in this region. Here. How many they are? Five. Right? So five is going to be the answer. So you have to make yourself expert in shading the regions after looking at the subjective set written in the set notation form. Just by looking at that, you should be expert enough in, in highlighting that region. And after that, you would be able to answer the questions, whatever they ask you. Okay. So the major thing that is, or the primary thing that is so required is your expertise in shading the region after reading the notation. Clear? That's it. You go to the next question now. What's the next question? Here, uh, cardinality of universal set is 20, means number of elements present in universal set is 20. 
in subset P, the number of elements are 10. In subset Q, the number of elements 13. And in P union Q whole complement region, there are five elements. Okay. Now, P union Q whole complement is where? Region outside P and Q is P union Q whole complement. Are you getting me? P union Q is this region fully. Whole complement means the region outside this uh, ticked region is P union Q whole complement, right? So in this region, the elements, number of elements present is 5. So I just write that here there are 5 elements. Now, total elements, 20. So now 15 elements are left that I have to adjust here, here, and here. Here. There are just 15 elements left. Now, in P, I'm having 10. In Q, I'm having 13. I can't write 10 and 13 over here directly. I have to make adjustment. Okay. I need such adjustment so that I could get 15 uh, elements uh, within these three ticked regions. Okay? Now, if I just write simply 5 here, for example, for example, if I write simply 5 here, so uh, P contains 10, so I just write 5 here to adjust 10. Okay? Now, full P contains 10 elements. And over here, I should write uh, 8. So 5 plus 10 gives you 13 elements in Q. Now, if I sum up these uh, three numbers, it gives me 18. So this adjustment is not perfect. So if I just increase the value in my intersection region, if I make it 6 then becomes 17. If I make it 7, it becomes 16. If I make it 8, it becomes 15, I guess. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to check it out. So if I just write 2 here, it gives you 10. If I write 5 here, it gives you 13. Now, it's completely 15 now. 15 plus 5 gives you 20. That's how we adjust. Okay. So you always start from the intersection region. Select a suitable number that should maintain the cardinality. Okay. So now once this is done, I need to answer now actual part of my question. Work out cardinality of n intersection q. So where is, uh, I'm sorry, P intersection Q. So P intersection Q is this. Number of elements present over here is 8. The answer is 8. One mark for the Venn diagram adjustment. One mark for the answer. Okay. Shall I move on? Yes. Okay, now here I've been given a Venn diagram that shows information about the number of elements in set A, B, and universal set. Cardinality of A intersection, A union B is 23. Find the value of X. A union B means this plus this plus this is equal to 23. And this way you can find out your X value. Okay. So.
cancel this x and this x. So uh, 28 minus x equals to 23. Okay. So x equals to 28 minus 23. That is 5. That's how you get your answer. And then an element is chosen at random from your universal set. Find the probability that this element is in A union B whole complement. Now, uh, before doing this question, you should write the cardinal. You should write the cardinality of all these three uh, circled regions uh, in number form. Okay, so 20 minus 5 is 15. This is 5, and this is 8 minus 5 give you 3. So now it's better for me to answer now. Now, A union B whole complement is the region outside your A union B. This is your A union B whole complement region and contains 7. So, the cardinality of A union B whole complement is 7. Clear? And then they are saying the for the probability that this element belongs to this region from the universal set and in the universal set how many elements you are having 15 plus 5 plus 3 plus 7 what it gives you 23 plus 7 gives you 30 clear so 7 upon 30 will be your answer now you just write like this first cardinality of your universal set is 15 plus 5 plus 3 15 plus 5 plus 3 plus 7 that is 30 okay cardinality of your a union b whole complement is equal to 7 yeah the probability that the element belongs to uh, this A union B whole complement. I call that event, this event as X. Okay. So event X tells me that instead of X, I must write that probability that this number must belong to A union B whole complement. So I just write like this, A union B whole complement. That's the probability of this is N times A union B whole complement upon N of universal set. This is 7 upon 30. You can either leave your answer in fraction form or you can write in decimals. It is totally your choice. Okay, so that's how we answer. And then, question 8, I need you to shade the region A into section B whole complement. Where shall I shade? Um, the part of A that doesn't touch B. The part of A that doesn't touch B and that's it? And the part of B that doesn't touch A. Mm -hmm. And the region outside as well. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the... You have to shade everything except this intersection region. This is something that you are not going to shade. And that's it. Thank you. And then we go to our next page. Here now set M is expressed in builder notation form, you can see. M contains set of all X such that, okay, this means such that, colon as well as this bar both means such that. So. Set of all x such that x belongs to an integer. x is an integer and it is 
fifth placed within this range okay such that 2 is less than and equals to x and x is less than 6 okay so this is an integer it doesn't contain any decimal number so if i want to express this set in tabular form it should be 2 3 4 5 yes that's it that's it what is the cardinality of this set? How many elements I'm having in this set? Four. Yes. So n of n is four. That's it. Now write down a set n such that n is the subset of m. And m is not an empty set. Keep this thing in mind. Now, as you can see, you're having four elements in set M, so it means that you can make uh, 2 power 4 means uh, 16 subsets you can make. And from the 16 subsets, one element, one subset is phi, and one subset is uh, M itself. Now, the remaining 14 subsets are the proper subsets. So, you can make one element subset, you can make two element subsets, you can make three element subsets. Now you have choice. You can write any of the subsets you want. I have selected to write three element subsets here. It's a too long blank, that's why. Miss, so, I didn't uh, get. You don't get what? I didn't get, Um, you said two or three element subsets. I didn't get that part. Okay, okay. See, you see, phi and uh, m itself is called, they are the uh, improper subsets. They both belong to improper subset category. Okay. They are improper subsets. And they are compulsory subsets. Okay. Now, I'm going to form a subset involving one element only. There, I'm, I will form subset involving two, subset involving three. These are just one element subsets. Okay. It's all over. I'm going to start forming two element subsets, two, three. Okay. As I told you that these two, uh, phi and m, are the fixed subsets. And now I'm having 14 subsets left. So out of 14, I have just formed five subsets. So keep me watching. And let me decrease the size a little. I'm going to make all the 14 subsets for you now. It is two, three, two, four comma, two, five, okay, and now I'll start three, four, okay, you make sure that you are, you can't move like this, three, two, you can't move reverse, in a reverse order, you always move ahead while making the subsets, okay, while organizing the elements inside the subsets, you can't move backwards, keep this thing in mind. Because 3, 2 and 2, 3 is the same thing. If you write 3, 2, then it means that you are duplicating the subsets and that's wrong. You always move ahead. So 3, 4, then 3, 5. That's the only two subsets you can make starting from 3. I hope you're getting me. So it's like this. And then 4, 5. Now two element subsets are done. I've just finished it. Now, three element subsets are left. So, you have to make combinations. Two, three, four. Okay. Two, three, five. Keep moving ahead. Don't revert. Okay. And three, four, five. That's all you can make. Is there anything that we can, we have skipped? Yeah. Two, four, five. These are all possible combinations that I can make. Are they all 14 from here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. 15 and 16 are phi and m. The total 16 element subsets have been so made. Now, out of these, uh, all 16 subsets, you can select any one you want. And over here, they have made a restriction that you are not going to write empty set over here. 
okay they have just uh, forbidden you don't write that apart from that you can write any subset you want out of these 14 these are all called proper subsets the these sets that i have started over here starting from this two they are all proper subsets okay so you have to select your answer from the proper subsets so i selected three element subsets two four five can write any one out of these 40. That's how we do it. Okay. One thing more for your knowledge I need to share. When you combine all these 16 subsets and you write them under one set like this, this is called power set of M. This is M. So this is called the power set of M, P of M. Make sure this is not a probability P, this is a power set P. Okay. So power set is the set containing all the subsets of the particular set M. Clear? Keep this thing in mind. Now, again, an exercise for you. You need to shade the region. Now tell me where shall I shade? A union B whole complement. Which region do I have to shade? Outside of A union B. Yeah. Outside A and B both. This is something that I am going to shade. Okay, and then C intersection D complement. First of all, just tell me which region is this? I need to shade this region. Um, the part, yeah. Which part? Part between C and D. When they meet, where they meet. Part between C and D is this. This is C intersection D complement. D complement, not C intersection oh. D. Yeah. Oh. Um, the part of C that doesn't intersect with D. Yes, beautiful. That's right. That's right. This is your. C intersection D complement. Okay. And now I need to take its union with E. So I will select this portion of E as well that does not contain D. Okay. But this is going to be my shaded section. Okay. That's how we do. Okay, now shade X intersection, X complement intersection Y. The part of Y that doesn't intersect with X. Brilliant. That's right. That's right. That's what you are going to shade. Okay. Now we come to the part B. The Van diagram shows information about the number of gardeners who grow melon, potatoes, and carrots. Okay. This is the setup they have given to us. A gardener is chosen at random from the gardeners who grow melons. Okay. Find the probability that this gardener does not grow carrots. Okay, fine. First of all, we just pick up 
all those gardeners numbers which are growing melons how many gardeners are growing melons three plus six plus two plus five this is the total number of gardeners which are growing melons which is inside m okay just don't worry that they if they belong to the intersection region as well that's perfect perfectly okay they are in growing melon as well so we are including them in the in the prop uh, in the majors in the major set of uh, in order to get the probability so probability that they are growing melons and does not grow carrots so from melons intersection c complement this is something that i need to find out okay so the probability of getting those gardeners which grow <clears throat> melon but do not grow carrots so which section does not grow carrots 12 and now and there it belongs to potatoes uh, potatoes and melons and six six and twelve these are those gardeners which do not grow carrots okay that's it so um but aren't we choosing from the melons who does but not one grow thing, but one thing one thing i just uh i just made a mistake here i must not include the gardeners who grow potatoes because it is not the part of this question in this question they are just saying that from this melon section you need to select those gardeners which do not grow carrots the six is actually uh, there are six number of gardeners which do not grow carrots and they grow melons okay so there are six in number so it will be six upon uh this three plus six plus five plus two what it gives me it gives me uh eight 9, 10, 11, and 16. It's this. So now I simplify this. So it is giving me a 3 by 8. So 3 by 8 is my answer. Um, miss? Yes? Aren't we going uh, to add 6 plus 3? Because they also do not grow carrots. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You are right. I forgot that. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's 9 by 16 then. I'm sorry. That's right, that's right. So 9 by 16, so is it further, can I simplify? No, I can't simplify it further. So 9 by 16 is my answer. Okay. And then, find cardinality of M intersection P union C complement. Get the shaded section, first of all. I mean, highlight the section that belongs to this set. M intersection P union C complement. See, M intersection P is this. Okay, and this section contains C and this section does not contain C. So this is going to be M intersection P union C complement. It contains 6. So the answer is 6. The cardinality of this section, uh, this region is 6. Okay. Now on the next page, again, a delicious question is here. There are 40 uh, children who were asked if they have a computer or phone or both. Okay. The Venn diagram shows the result here. Seven have only computers. 23 have only phone. Eight have both. And two have none. Okay, that's what it means. Now, let's answer. A child is chosen at random 
from the children who have computers. How many children have computers? Seven plus eight means 15 students have computers. From the 15 students, write down the probability that this child also has phone. There are eight. Eight by 15 will be the answer. Is it clear? Yes. Hmm. Now complete this Venn diagram. Complete this Venn diagram. Do not have a computer. Do not have a phone. Okay, and so on. Okay. 40 children. Now here, this is going to be your uh, C complement. This is going to be your P complement. Okay. And this is going to be C complement intersection P complement. Okay. And this is going to be the remaining value so left. All right. So C complement means those who do not have computers. So. Uh, just look at this original Venn diagram above here. This one. How many students have computers? 15 students have computers. So if I subtract 15 from my 40, I'm getting what? I'm getting 25. So there are 25 students who do not have computers. Let me just write down here roughly. There are 25 students who do not have computers. Similarly, how many students do not have Phone. You see, there are um, 30, 31 students, right? There are 31 students who have phone here. So I subtract uh, 31 from 40, I get 9. So there are 9 students who do not have phone. Clear? And those students who have both computers and phone, they're going to be written here. So those students who have both computers and phone, they are eight in number. So I just write eight over here in the blank. So I just write eight here. Okay. Now, 25 plus 9, give me what? Give me 34. 34 plus 8, give me 42, which is a contradiction. It should give me 42. So I have some adjustment here in the intersection section, intersection region. If I just write 2 here, for example, so I must write 23 here to make it 25, and I must write 7 here to make it 9. Now if I sum up all these four numbers, am I getting 40? Let's check it out. Oh. Yes, we are getting 40. But this is the way how we fill up. I hope it's clear. Yeah, yes. It all um, requires practice and nothing else. Now we come here. Uh, a band diagram is given to us. You need to shade the region. B, A, union, B, whole complement, intersection C. Now just dictate me what do I have to shade here. Just check out by yourself. Uh, we're going to shade the outside, all of the outside. Outside what? Like outside the set. Everything outside. No, I don't understand what you're trying to say. Just tell me one thing. Where is A union B whole complement? The part of A that's not touching touching B. Yes, uh, entire region that does not contain B is A union B whole complement, right? It means yeah. this full thing is your A union B whole complement. Clear? That's that's it. 
Now, then I say that in this entire region, in this entire region, this is something that contains C as well. That's the common region I can find. This is, this region contains A union B whole complement as well as C both. This is the intersection region. And that's what I'm going to shape. That's what I'm going to shade and then I remove my rough work. That's how we do. Okay. Now again, shading thing, A intersection B, it's such a baby question, you can easily answer me. Um, where A and B are? Yes, this intersection region is going to be the shaded one. Okay, and then it says, okay, it says nothing. We go to the next page now. Now, in a class of 40 students, 28 wear glasses, 13 have driving lessons, 4 do not wear glasses and do not have driving lessons. Okay. I just write 4 here. Now, you need to complete the Venn diagrams. Total, uh, I mean the cardinality of the universal set is 40. Now, out of 44 is something that is written outside, and the remaining uh, number that I'm having is 36. Okay, so I have to adjust the values in such a way that the sum of these three numbers must give you 36. Okay. All right. Now, 28 wear glasses, 13 have driving lessons. If I directly write 28 and 13, then the sum of these three numbers is not going to give me 40. Okay? It will be greater than 40. Okay. So it's 28 plus 17. That is 45. All right? Greater. I have to make adjustment. So if I write 5 here, because if I directly write the values 28 plus 13 plus 4, it is giving me uh, 45. If I subtract 40 from it, I'm getting 5 here. Okay? So if I write this 5 in the intersection region, then I try to adjust the values. I just write 23 here that gives me 28. And I just write, uh, what should I write here to get 13? 8. Now some of these 4 numbers, are you getting 40? Yes. Yes. So that's the way how you decide the number that should be written in the intersection region. This is the way how you decide. That's a key. Okay. Use uh, use set notation to describe the region that contains a total of thirty two students. Twenty-three plus five. What it gives me? It gives 20. me twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight plus four gives me thirty-two. Okay. So if I just so G union D complement. Uh, it must not be D complement. Uh, because in, in that case, 5 is also not going to be included. So what shall I write here? This is the shaded region. 
So it contains Twenty-three plus five gives twenty-eight. Twenty-eight plus four gives me thirty-two. So, okay, G. Okay, there is no D complement involvement because D complement is not going to include five. So. Okay, now the region which is outside both circles is this, okay. and this is going to be G union D whole complement. Okay, that the, the region that is, that is outside, and then I include uh, from this outside region, I'm going to take the union of G. Are you getting me? So this is including this whole G. Are you getting it? This is the answer. G union D whole complement, that is the outside region, union G. I hope it's clear now what I'm trying to deliver. Yes. And then we come to the next part. This fan diagram shows uh, information about number of students who play basketball, football, and hockey. Find cardinality of B union F intersection H prime. Where's B union F? B union F is this. Intersection H complement. It means this region contains H and this region does not contain H. So this is going to be the subjective region which is representing this and contains 7. 7 is the answer. That's why it's simply a one mark question. Okay. Now, shade the region. Guide me. Where do I have to shade? Um, you'll shade the part of Q that doesn't intersect with R. Okay, and? And you will shade the part of B that doesn't intersect with R. Part of B. Q intersection R whole complement is actually this. Yeah. Oh, whole complement. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to take union with P. So this whole P is also going to be the shaded one. I'm going to shade this. Fine. So I'm not going to shade only this section. That's what I'm not going to shade, and the remaining one I will shade. So that's all for today. I have covered uh, 11 pages. Tomorrow, inshallah, I'll try to cover further more. It's 10 to 11 further ahead. And then the remaining ones, I'll leave for you people to practice by yourself. They're, they're quite easy papers, uh, questions. You can just cover it within one day. If you just reserve hardly one hour or 1.5 hour, you can cover that. Okay. So tomorrow, inshallah, no, not tomorrow. Uh, Next Friday, yeah, they will try to cover it. I was going to ask you about the Ramadan timing. Yes, yes, I will inform you, inshallah, in the group, the Ramadan timings. So I have decided to take it in the morning. I will let you know, inshallah. Okay. So, love this.